I V M. Hey guys, even though Elon Musk is trying to turn everyone into robots, you'll be happy to know that very real human beings work at IVM Podcast, and some of them are even cool. How do I know? Well, listen to their own podcast, IVM Likes, where they recommend what they are listening to, watching, or reading. Catch IVM Likes every Monday on iTunes, Stitcher, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And may I recommend the IVM Podcasts app? Hello and welcome to Geekfield Bulletin, where we discuss news and not news of the week and of the year and of all time, really. Because who's going to stop us? Jishnu, I have to begin this episode with a correction, a, a corrigendum, if you will. We put out this Monday an episode on 2.0, the mm-hmm. sequel to Superstar Rajni's Robot, and. A large part of the discussion was about the quality of the VFX and how, in spite of having a lot of money and being the most expensive film ever produced in India, uh, they didn't spend it well enough, and the VFX still looked shoddy. And my argument was that even though they spent four times the money that an Avengers has, they still couldn't quite match anything close to an Avengers quality, and that was because of poor staging and poor vision and direction, right? Hmm. Now, uh, my cousin from Hyderabad, <laughs> who is listening to the show, uh, literally, start. On, yeah, on Monday morning, messaged okay. me saying like, hey, Dinkar, I think you might have made a mistake. <laughs> and I said, yes, but what is this in relation to? I've probably made a lot of mistakes. So apparently, I jumbled up the numbers and it's Avengers, which is basically four times as much as... Uh, that 2. makes 0. a lot more it sense. It makes a lot more sense, right? That now makes, that I think about it, that this is what a, happens. A good amount of sense. This is what happens when I juggle the crossword and the podcast and doing maths. I'm terrible at maths. I'm good at crosswords and I'm average at this podcast. <laughs> but yes, that is a correction. I, I still feel like the, the point stands... Uh, 2.0 is poor in the VFX department in a lot of sequences because of bad staging. Have sure. you heard that episode? Nope. Okay, so <laughs> one of the well, uh, yeah, I I I I was asking because there's an I haven't seen the movie, so I haven't seen the episode. Heard the episode. Well, the climax of this movie, and it is doesn't sound like I should see this movie. Oh, you should just to just for the cultural experience of it. But the climax of this movie is that a bunch of Rajnikants. Mm-hmm replicate themselves okay. to almost infinity numbers and form a giant sphere and then uh-huh. every Rajnikanth in this giant sphere pulls out two machine guns and then starts shooting them mm-hmm. while the ball of Rajnikanth rolls all around a football stadium oh, fun. shooting oh. at a giant cluster of mobile phones that's shaped like a bird okay yeah so my argument was you could spend um, 10 times the budget of an Avengers there's no way to make that look good that is a movie okay? Yeah. All right. Let's 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 move on very swiftly. Yes. All right. So, Solo, a Star mm-hmm. Wars story, Ooh. has been disqualified from the Oscars. Why? It was up for best original song and original score category. What's the best original song? Uh, well, I guess more more like score in this case. Right. Yeah. Um. So why but do you think they what? have elements from the original Star Wars score? Yes. It's like it's it's um yeah themes by John Williams but score composed by John Powell. Right. And that's why they're disqualified? No. Then? They missed the deadline. What? (laughs) Are you serious? (laughs) November 15th was the deadline. And Disney just didn't make it in time. Uh, Neither did the new Nicolas Cage movie, Mandy. Yeah. Neither did the Viggo Mortensen, Mahershala Ali period drama. Green uh, Book. Green Book. Nor did the 40 years in the making Orson Welles film, The Other Side of the Wind. What? It's been in it's been in production they, for 40 years. See, I don't blame that movie because it's taken them 40 years to get a movie made. I can see them missing a deadline. What's up with... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And how can Green Book miss uh-huh. it? Green Book looks like a movie that was tailor-made to do well at the Oscars. It's about race relations. It's got Mashallah Ali. It's got Viggo Mortensen. It's directed by one of the Farrelly brothers, which is astonishing to me. Wow. Yeah. Well then. One of the Farrelly brothers made a prestige Oscarish movie. Is it out already? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, and so, in other so basically, news, well, we're saying a Disney intern is getting fired. Somebody's getting fired. Somebody's Somebody somewhere getting fired. Somewhere for getting sure. fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think you just walked in the office one day and someone was like, uh, "So you send in that uh, that entry form for the Oscars, right?" And the guy's like, 
Oh shit! <laughs> it's in my drafts. <laughs> Arre. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in other news, Duke Nukem. Ye- oh, remember that, that guy? Yes. Yeah. So this movie's been in the scripting stage for a while now. People have been shopping it around. Yes, because there is no script to Duke Nukem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Michael Bay was supposed to be the one producing it. Right. John Cena was supposed to be the one playing it. John Cena kind of already looks like Duke Nukem, exactly. huh? Exactly. Yes. It's that hair. It's, the uh, the yeah. fact that his face looks like it's made of pixels. <laughs> it's very square. <laughs> it's quite square. Um, so yeah, so it was going to be Michael Bay. Mm-hmm. Not anymore. It was going to be John Cena. Mm-hmm. TBD. Mm-hmm. But the only thing they have confirmation of so far, which is, uh, this is why this is perfect for news slash not news. How much do you care that the Assassin's Creed producer is now producing this? A lot. Oh, really? No. I just, not yeah, at all. Nobody, nobody Assassin's Creed is another terrible video but, game but movie. But for some reason, this this was newsworthy enough that it popped up on my thing. So you're telling me that they looked at Assassin's Creed yeah. and said, well... Uh, we'll, we'll have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that. They were, like, that. They were like, we want Michael Bay, the guy that at least puts like butts in seats. Whether yeah. or not you like his movies, he get, he gets butts in seats. I guess so. We want John Cena because whether you like him or not, he also gets butts in seats. What is the Assassin's Creed producer's name? Assassin's is it Creed anyone guy? we'd recognize even? Uh, it's something... Uh, John Julian Baronet. Oh, Lord. Why? Uh, I don't know why. With a name like that, I would think he'd be better. You would think so, right? right? Especially like Assassin's Creed was a lost opportunity, right? Because there's so much depth of story there. Duke Nukem has zero story, if I remember correctly. Which kind of makes it more... It was basically that... Duke Nukem's in a place and there are aliens. Isn't this it? Something like that. Yeah, I mean, no, I remember nobody we, nobody played the game for the story. That's exactly. For sure. Which, which kind of puts you in a stronger position if you're writing a story for it. Because you're just like, cool, I have this character, he's fun and he does absurd things which, you know, I you can really do up with a sizable VFX budget. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and then build some uh, Maybe nice if you around. had fun with... Um, but Duke Nukem is inherently a bit of a joke character. Like, even then, he was like a bro-ish dude, always wearing yes. his sunglasses, going to topless bars. Yeah. So, the this is a um, a word from... What's it? The Vice President of Business Development. Wow. Jesus, from Gearbox. Always exciting to hear yeah. from them. Yeah, right? He's a parody of 1980s action heroes, and he's like Deadpool in terms of being able to break the fourth wall. Aha. Uh-huh. We see That's a lot it. of humor in his confronting the values of today while trying to save the world. So that makes sense. That's yeah. an interesting approach, actually. Yeah, I f- I feel like if you can, there's potential. Th- there's here. potential like, this now. Good. This could do because also when you pick when you make a movie about a video game that's that old, like you said, people don't remember the story. Mm-hmm. The comparison issue is not going to be such a big issue. Like yeah. when we reviewed Assassin's Creed and like Warcraft and stuff, the problem was. We love the stories in those games, and you're just not. But they can't translate them well because you don't right? have the time. The problem with the video game is that, unlike a book or unlike a movie, it's not a it's not a passive experience. It's a very active experience. So, like right. you remember the fact that like Arthas went a, and did this, and the Lich King came, and da 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 da. Yeah. And you know, like what whatever the hell, the various uh, ancestors of um, the Assassin's Creed saga yeah. did in the in the you know you remember like specific missions quite well. When you have a story like this, which is not a story, the yeah. Duke Nukem thing, it's just like, huh, that video game about the, the muscle head dude that looked like a square yeah. and blew up aliens and there were, <laughs> there a were like... vaguely Arnold Schwarzenegger shaped yeah. square. Exactly, exactly, right? yeah. I feel like a Vin Diesel could play him maybe. Totally. But I feel like anybody could. How can just just get somebody that can land the jokes and, you know... With this approach, I think it just might work because I feel that when video game movies play with the conventions of video games themselves, Mm -hmm. they actually do pretty well. But Mm. when they try to tell the story of the video game in movie format, they fail terribly. You never have the time. There's never been a single video game to movie conversion. Assassin's Creed is terrible. Like one of my favorite stories in a game is Max Payne. And that Max Payne movie Uh, is one of the worst movies ever. Who was in it? Uh, Mark Wahlberg. Right. Holy crap. Mark Wahlberg, right? Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. And Mila Kunis, I think. What? Yeah, they don't even take the story that well like the mm. best video game movie is probably Mortal Kombat like it's the most successful sure. at what it does which is basically come with a goofy fun action movie Yeah. but movies can take video game conventions and use them to tell movie stories like Ralph Breaks the Internet mm-hmm. and Wreck-It Ralph for that matter which we were mm-hmm. talking about a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. is like a lot of it is set in video games and it does great so it's possible to use the video game medium if you kind of use it and not just try and take the story and convert it into a format where it doesn't work. Because also that being said, I think a lot of the video games that we play have extended cutscenes that just do exactly what the movies are trying to do, but yeah. in about 85 minutes less. Which also they struggle with sometimes. True. 
And there's so many like laborious cut scenes yeah. in so many games. This is true. But yeah. Cool. In what other more news, not news you have. Uh, have you seen this Avengers trailer? I have. It's a movie that's coming out apparently. Yeah. It's surprising that you've seen it. I know, right? Because a uh, viewer mail that has come in from uh, Shivan, yeah, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Seth. I'm, <laughs> I'm a verb now. Yeah, I like you're, it. you're not a verb. He said. He said he's pulling a Jishnu. Well, if you're a verb, it would be he's Jishnuing. Let me have my moment. Okay, fine. Okay. You're, you're a noun. You oh, already no. were a noun. Yeah, I was born a noun. <laughs> don't don't try to denounce me. Yeah. All right, Jishnu, you're a verb. So, uh, Shivan uh, pulled a Jishnu, or he Jishnu'd, by deciding not to watch the trailers from now on, which is surprising to me, considering Jishnu... He said he's decided to do a Jishnu Guha. Well, is I'm that a... sure lots of people have over the years. Oh-ho. But... Who what? No, I, I said... Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, but uh, you didn't pull a Jishnu Guha. I did not. Why is that? Because this is one of those movies that I'm I'm willing to make the exception for, and I'm really glad I did because both uh, this trailer and the Captain Marvel trailer, the second one that came out, you watched that also. I've seen both of them. Oh wow! I know, right? It was a very <laughs> exciting week for me. Who are you, and what um, have you done with the jigs? So what I liked about both the trailers is that they didn't tell you really anything. I think you can expect that from Marvel at this point, which is great. Like yeah. they know how to Unlike The freaking Aquaman trailer Five minutes long That I had to watch Because I was watching Crimes of Grindelwald In theatres And oh. it played right before Have you seen that? The five minute long I Saga have. trailer Yes It's Who the hell It's not even a trailer They just released it as Here's five minutes from the movie Oh no 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 I, This was a trailer that I saw I But it is, it, it is played giant. before the crimes It didn't play yeah. in the theatre I watched it in well, it I did. didn't realize it was a thing. That was it was Freaking a travesty. Warner Bros., man. It was a travesty. It was like, like I thought they learned their lesson from that Turkish Airlines nonsense <laughs> with BVS and stuff. Nope, we they've gone are worse. Turkish Airlines. That was just nonsense. We unlike, are <clears throat> unlike um, the Avengers one. What I did enjoy about it mm-hmm. was that um, it really, yeah, it just it didn't tell you Jack other than. The fact that we're now going to get more of the A-team who kind of got the short end of the stick in the first movie. Correct. Which made sense. All the fun stuff was on Titan. And they brought back the... Like, they answered two questions at least, which is, uh, you know, where, like, Ant-Man was missing and Mm -hmm. he's in this. Mm. Uh, For example, Hawkeye was missing and he's in this prominently. which is great. See, that's literally all we know, right? The fact that they're in it and they're prominent. Correct. Which Which we kind of knew already anyway. Exactly. It's just that we're being shown. Exactly. It's like, all I know now is that's what his haircut looks like. Amazing. Yeah. And I'm perfectly happy with that. Which is part of the fun of it, if you ask me. Like, so you are obviously constantly pulling a Jishnu Guha. Yeah. Tejas is probably somewhere in the middle. I'm pretty open to watching whatever because I find that spoilers don't affect me as much. Yeah. Though I still have my yeah. yeah you like, don't get butt hurt. Yeah. Like I do. Yeah. Not not to an um, not to an insane extent, but yeah. I mean, not that you're insane. I love you, but uh, I I'm pretty open to watching whatever. Mm-hmm. But with movies like Avengers, especially, or like most Marvel movies, or most like or like a Star Wars movie, mm-hmm. the trailers are a part of the experience. Really, yes, to me. if they're done well, but there's but you're always asking for more trouble than it's worth, and that's my yeah. Problem. Like yeah. I never expected DC trailer to be good, right? Like yeah. I remember the first time I saw the first BVS trailer, mm-hmm. I was like, "This is going to be one of the worst movies ever." <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Yeah, <laughs> and ever since then, Warner Brothers in particular has always struggled with trailers. They never yeah. know how to, how much to put out, and they're basically in this like super insecure situation where they're like, uh, "Okay, what if we just show you like." Everything from the movie except the climax. Then please come and watch the yeah. movie. Please, 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 please. Seriously. And we're like, oh, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's still terrible. But Marvel at this point is basically the the marketing and the lead up to the movie is a part of the experience of how they put out these movies. Like Avengers mm-hmm. is such a big movie because we've lived through it, right? Like. Yeah. 20 years later, Mm -hmm. when future generations are watching these movies over a weekend, Mm -hmm. it's going to be fun and they'll still be good movies, Mm -hmm. but it won't feel like what it feels like to us right now because we're living it. We've waited these two years. The the Force Awakens first trailer, Mm -hmm. the Chewie were home. Yeah. I I, I think that that three seconds, the first time you saw it, actually even on repeat viewing, it's a trailer that I can rewatch. Exactly. That says something. Yeah. Like the fact that like I've had moments where I've been like, I don't feel like I don't have the time right now to watch all the Force Awakens. Let me just get like a little like, like <laughs> just, me, like a, a quick little, little fix, hit quick, of dopamine. Quick little hit, yeah, a yeah. little hit, little bit of a hit. Yeah. Just watch that trailer and I get the feels. I get the full so feels. So good, right? Because I, I, it's a really well done 
snippet. Yeah, yeah it's like it, it gets that the emotion perfectly. across. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it, it's a piece of work by itself. It's, totally. it's a piece of art. Yeah. The first Guardians trailer, I remember, was so good. Yeah. It, yeah. When it introduced you to like a whole new bunch of people in a really fun way, it's great. The first Suicide Squad trailer, better than any movie Warner Brothers has ever That's put true. out. Uh, well, that was I mean, a Bohemian one, right? Uh, the Bohemian one, if I remember yeah. correctly. It looked so exciting. And this Aquaman, by the way, I went and sought out. It was on YouTube. They yeah. said the first five minutes are out. Oof. And I was like, whatever, I'll and? watch it. I don't give a shit. And? So bad, huh? Yeah. But I'm hearing good stuff about the movie. I guess. I don't know why. Maybe, I do you think people have just reached just this, don't. like, the, their expectations for the Warner Bros have bottomed out? That and would explain a lot. They're like... Yeah, whatever. He talks to the fishes, I guess. It's fine. It's a good movie. I love it. The dude takes his shirt off through most of it and he says funny lines. What? What's not to like, I guess. At least his mustache is real. <laughs> it's the best you can say about it. But, so yeah, I, I guess our message to the world is be a Jishnu Guha, but keep your judgment with you like Jishnu Guha does and make the call based on the movie and the trailer. That'll never fit on a bumper sticker. I know, right? I, I feel like... One more time, one more time. Be a Jishnu Guha, but not. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that works. I'll take it. That's something you should do as well, Jishnu. I'll take it. <laughs> I will as well. All right. This has been the Geek Fruit Bulletin. Check out a full episode this week where we're talking about the aforementioned 2.0. That's a fun one. And there's a lot to unpack there. And uh, follow us on all the socials at Geek Fruit HQ and write into us if you have more stuff to say or if you have your views on being a Jishnu Guha or not being a Jishnu Guha at uh, contactgeekfruit at gmail.com. Bye, you nerds. Hi, my name is Abbas. I'm a producer at IVM. And I, along with other staff members of IVM, uh, we do this show called IVM Likes, where we give recommendations of books, movies, music, uh, TV shows that we've seen. We've even recommended video games and YouTube channels. And we are soon reaching our 100th episode. We are on episode 99 right now. And on the 100th episode, we'd love to hear from you. So send us your messages, voice notes, goodwill, all of it on shows at indusvox.com and we will read out your messages on the 100th episode of IVM Likes. Tell us about the recommendations we've given you that you've enjoyed. Tell us about the episodes that you remember. Tell us about the conversations that you've enjoyed and we will read all of it out on the 100th episode. Send your messages on shows at indusvox.com and do tune in to the 100th episode of IVM Likes out next week. Advertising is dead. Yep, you heard me right. Advertising is dead. We're all in the content business now. Let's not call it news, TV, radio, etc, etc. It's all content and we're in the middle of this weirdly exciting phase where all the borders and lines that have been drawn over decades has been swept away by this lovely thing called the internet. We're a show where we don't dwell on just the stuff that is now, but rather the wider stuff about advertising, media, content and the whole goddamn circus surrounding it. Tune in every Tuesday for our weekly unboxing of the mystery box we used to call advertising. I'm Varun Dugirala, co-founder and content chief at The Glitch, and this is my new podcast, Advertising is Dead. Advertising is Dead.